Scissor Sisters, having a kiki, the only radio station that plays this song. My God, all the other stations are just stupid, in my opinion, because this oh. song <laughs> is number one. Julie Leaf. I'm here. Fit Organics. <laughs> I was wiggling. Were you having a kiki? We were having a, in my own mind, anyway. I'm always having kiki in my own mind. <laughs> but everybody else is joining me in the studio today. And today we're focusing in on our minds. Yeah, Memory. Are trying to focus. Yes, trying to <laughs> a focus. A foggy focus. It's all about your mind and memory. Now, there's different types of memories. There are. There's like good memories, bad memories. No, just kidding. There's there's five different types of memory, actually. Um, the first one is um, called sensory. And that is like an immediate record of stimuli from the environment. So what I mean by that is like if you're walking across the street and you see the light turn yellow, then you know you have to either bolt or stop because it's about to turn red. So that those different shades we have association with and it's something that we've we've learned over time and so it that becomes our short term memory so you know you see the Ooh, stimuli and memory. then yeah this is where it gets dicey wait. you see the stimuli and you go wait a second i can't cross the road so you stop and then you you know that that becomes oh i i stopped why because i i was told by the lights that i couldn't cross right. so short term memory then is information stored for a short period of time also known as the working memory so that's stuff like, oh, I'm walking to this building now that I've crossed the road and I've got to hit the elevator button. What floor did they say they were on? Oh, yeah, they're on the second floor. Now, that's the memory that most people have a tough time with. You have to check your phone to see the directions. You have to text somebody to ask them where you're going again. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Whatever, whatever is <laughs> happening in our minds, a lot of people are having a lot of trouble with short-term memory. And we'll get back to that. Um, there's of course long term memories and those are childhood memories I have that. and yes. I have yes. I can I can remember things that have happened a long time ago. Me too. Some things I don't want to remember that I can't forget. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Again. True. <laughs> Procedural memory, the fourth type, is like driving. Or riding a bike, or operating your computer, nope. or Helena operating the switchboard for us so wonderfully. That's oh, a procedural that's nice, memory. Well, God knows we couldn't do it. Yikes. What's that called? That's procedural. I don't have that. No, I was born without. I need a lot memory. of repetition to get that one down. Yeah, I have to get it in my like um, sensory, then into my short term, then into my long term. I don't think I have very good procedural either. No, no, not happening mm. over here. No, and no. then there's the last one is called explicit. It's not Ooh. what you think. <laughs> this is your dirty memories of those times in bed when you're having a kiki with someone. I remember all those things. <laughs> Just I wish. It's a little bit more boring than that. The oh. explicit memory is actually fact. Which could be in your bedroom too, but more like um, the capital of Canada is Ottawa. Ottawa, I knew that. Very good. Thank or you. or <laughs> Ontario's um, um, capital city is Toronto. Toronto. Excellent. Oh, look at you. Look at us. You're on fire. <laughs> we are going to be feeding our memory, and Julie Leaf is going to come back because I'm sure that all these outside forces, though, it's not just like recreational things that affect your memory. It's also outside <laughs> forces that can affect, like phones and stuff like it's, that. Like, Yeah, there's a huge distraction sort of factor that, that has come about in this day and age. Do I sound 100 when I say day and age? But anyway, um, there is, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that and why our smartphones could be making us dumber. Ooh. Mm. We'll be right back with Julie Lee from Fit Organics. Miss Grace Jones, I need a man on the Pride of Toronto, 1039 Proud FM, and isn't that the <laughs> I truth? Know I was going to say. Mike Chalou oh. needs a man. But that's okay. I have Julie Lee from Fit Organics. If you're just joining us, we're talking about memory, things that affect your memory, and food for your memory. Now, there are so many outside forces besides drugs and alcohol. Yes. Which affects most of our brains. If I partied, I would know that. Yes. But I don't. No. At Good. all. No, 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 no. Water. Water and juice on this one. But um, things that affect our memory. There are things. And, and a lot of people ask me or, or think, you know, they, they're they losing their minds lately. And a lot of the time what happens is, um, especially with all the technology that we're using today, although it makes our lives easier and it makes things faster and more efficient in a lot of ways, what happens is we used to have to remember telephone numbers and we used to have to remember a lot of things and now we've got these devices that do it for us. So in the past, you might remember a phone number but and it would be encoded in your mind because you'd be forced to recall it. Now we can just look up the number in our phone or dial it in, that kind of thing. Add to the fact that we're constantly being bombarded with ringing phones, emails, text messages, whatever. I mean, 
I can't even look at my phone without being distracted from something else. So number one, we have a shortened time frame at which to learn those little things. And number two, we don't really ever learn them because we just don't have to. But for all the other ways and the, all the other types of memory we have, there's still a lot that we can do to um, improve our cognitive function and improve our memories overall. And is it food related? A lot of it. Some of it's food related. Some of it's behavioral. And uh, one of the first things is to just turn off the ringer on your phone. And tur- <laughs> there you go. <laughs> on cue. Oh, oh, my Mike's gosh. phone rings. <laughs> How unprofessional. <laughs> well, I'm at work. <laughs> Turn it off, Shalou. <laughs> well, it's, it'll distract you and you won't yes. remember the next, next tax that, task that you have to do. Right. Phone's um, off, always. Phone is off, yes. Um, another thing that they're finding with people's brains that are lacking cognitive function and lacking memory function, especially um, in they're finding this in, in the brains of people that have had Alzheimer's disease or have Alzheimer's disease, is actually the part of your brain responsible for memory, your hippocampus, actually shrinks. As we age and shrinks when we start to lose our memory. However, the, the, the light at the end of that tunnel is that meditation and stuff like yoga, high five for hot yoga. Hot yoga every day. Improves no. your... Helena. I know he doesn't like, oh, no. <laughs> judgment. We're looking at Helena with judgment right now. It, hot yoga and meditation actually improves your hippocampus function and makes it larger. That makes sense, though, because I am a lot smarter after yoga. Yeah, I think there's a combination of things that happens. I think that it helps you get rid of or me get rid of um, nervous energy. And then it also helps us focus because that area of our brain is then uh, ready to um, operate. grow and grow. operate. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Um, cardio is Helena. I know oh, you yeah, like your cardio. I'm in, okay. I'm in for that one. She's in. She's good. Cardio also helps to alleviate stress and anxiety. Cortisol. We've heard that hormone before. It um, actually shuts down parts of our brain when we're under a lot of stress stress and our cortisol levels are high, it's hard for our brain to function normally. So cardio gets your cortisol levels down some. It raises your serotonin. We all love that beautiful brain chemical. Um, And that helps us to be able to function better too with memory. Now, Now, what about foods? mm -hmm, That was my next thing out of my mouth. With foods, you want to make sure that you top up on your fats. Remember your brain food. Healthy fats. Healthy fats. Exactly. Anything processed or baked goods or cookies or chips that's all out the window. No, throw it all out. What we want, and my dad told me this one day, my dad has this huge list of foods and body parts that they look like and how it helps brain function. So walnuts, a half walnut, kind of looks like your brain on top. Oh, I see that. Walnuts are brain food. Yeah, it definitely resembles Helena's brain. Oh, my do that little Mike. thing. Because <laughs> 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 we're after him today. Uh, wow. We boxed earlier buttons. today. We boxed earlier today. I, I see Helena. that. Let's take on Helena oh for sure. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, Helena. It's okay. Just push the button. <laughs> what about so, salmon fat? I was just going to say fish oils are good. Right. Avocado's good. Any of your nut oils, any of your um, extra virgin olive oil. Also, you don't want to forget B vitamins and uh, your vitamins A, C and E for uh, antioxidants too. Julie Lee, Fit Organics. It's all about your mind. How do they check you out online, you gorgeous creature? Check me out at Fit Organics with an X.com. You can follow us and join the conversation on Twitter. We're Fit Organics with an X there. Also, don't forget Facebook. We post recipes and daily photos of our food. Love your guts, girl. Love your guts, guys.